what would be your advice in terms of you know finding that passion uh, and having that light bulb moment yeah look at i suppose um getting getting as much exposure if, if you think that strength and conditioning is something that you want to do then i think um first of all getting in and, and shadowing worthwhile coaches coaches that you respect or, or you know or anybody really you're gonna you're gonna find things that you like and that resonate with you um no matter who the coach is um mm-hmm. if, if it's for you i think um yeah and then pursuing opportunities um after after i did the new zealand stuff i, I moved to melbourne um, maybe six months later and uh just started reaching out to people and, and one of the people i reached out to was was um, a guy by the name of brendan whelan who's he's working with development in uh, rugby australia he's doing a little bit of work with the wallabies and australia at the moment and he was he was he was just a pt in a gym and and um he was doing a little bit of voluntary work and um i think probably similar to, to yourself and murph yeah, i came in under him and then he moved up and i moved up and and that pattern continued. What would that mean to you? Is that a, a thing that you're thinking about when you're designing your program? Is it how you communicate that program to the athletes so then they understand what this is going to help them with on the field? Or is it um, bringing the coaches on board from a buying perspective? Talk us about what that means to you in terms of helping the game plan and, and a football program. Yeah, mate, that's a, that's a great question. I think it's probably a little bit of all of that. I think um, if, I, if I use Manly as an example, um, you know, we had Des Hassler in there and, and he wanted to play a certain way. He wanted, he was very uh, clear about the type of football he wanted to play and what t- type of team he wanted us to be. And it was, it was gritty and it was being able to grind and it was being able to wear teams down. And, and I think then understanding that, knowing that we kind of supplemented some of our strength work with, um, you know, strongman circuits or, or circuit work or things like that, where it's just about, it's less about developing maximal strength or power or really doing things you know, really clearly by the book and just about staying in it and developing a little bit more of a mental resilience. What are some of the important things that you've learned during your time in changing from, from rugby to AFL? Yeah, I think um, a, a lot of it is, again, we'll touch on it a little bit, but the similarities and differences, but um, it's a lot of things are a lot more similar than what you'd, you'd imagine. I think, you know, going back eight, 10 years ago, I would have thought the strength program for a, for an AFL team and, and, the strength program for an NRL team and a rugby union team would be chalk and cheese. And, you know, they'd be totally separate entities where a lot of the stuff um, is pretty, it's pretty similar. It's, it's more about looking at the game, looking at the demands of the game, um, looking at the athletes in front of you and, and, and addressing that with your programming. Um, I think the learnings from Shane from the, that I got from Shane were probably um, being yourself and being consistent and, um, being being true to 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 who you are as a coach, I think as cliche as it sounds, I think that was something that he did. He was he was pretty. Um, I think he's quite. He can be quite critical of himself. Starting with with AFL, what would be some key considerations from a strength and power perspective? Yeah, look, I think um, like I said before, I'll probably just touch on the, the similarities are, are more more evident than, than the differences really. Um, and I think it's, again, looking at the, the game plan of the coach and the demands of the sport, um, first and foremost, uh, I probably would have anticipated a lot more differences coming across. And um, even in terms of culture, I was worried that, you know, potentially players would be adverse to lifting or might not be as, as big on the gym or the strength work as potentially they had in, in rugby union and league where it's embedded, it's, it's part of the, you know, it's part of the fiber of the sport, but I was so pleasantly surprised that there's a there was a really good, um, you know, lifting culture at Essendon, and that we've been able to build on that. Um, I think the you know the differences, the similarities, first of all, are kind of you're you're going to try and you know increase tissue tolerance, you know, uh, look to improve strength and power output. If we're looking at sort of reducing or mitigating uh, soft tissue injuries in in the sports. What, how do the methods sort of, how, how are they similar in, in rugby union, rugby league and AFL and how do they differ? I think um, so far in my experience, it, it's been pretty similar. It's probably looking at, um, looking at the demands of the sports. So, you know, there's going to be higher incidences of potentially hamstrings in, in AFL or, or ACLs, things like that. So it's looking at um, the demands of the sport, no matter what sports you're in. And then, um, just, I think, ensuring that you're kind of exposing the players to the appropriate appropriate stimuli or um, on the field and in the gym and, and yeah, just getting an ex- appropriate recovery. Um, whole session, I think, um, 
yeah, it's, it's probably a collaborative approach just again, talking about it as a department, identifying what are the things, the individuals you have, what are the, maybe the, um, the patterns or what things we need to, to allow for 